In this video, I'm gonna tell you how to make this puzzle. It's not really that hard to make. The object of the puzzle is to slide the pieces around. And when you get all done, when you get all done sliding, you wanna end up with a square in this corner. When you start, it'll be in this corner. So just a matter of moving pieces around back and forth. It's a fairly simple puzzle to make. It's not that hard. There's actually 58 moves to get that square into this corner. I only found this puzzle on YouTube one time and the person just ran through real fast how to solve it. So unless you have a good memory, you aren't gonna remember all those moves. There's actually about 58 moves. So I took some paper cut out the pieces, I numbered the pieces, took a picture of the pieces in place at the beginning. Then I ran through his video, stop and go, stop and go. I wrote down all the moves and I put all that information on a PDF file. So here's a PDF I'm gonna list on the video. It shows a picture of the pieces at the start position. When you end up, you wanna have the number one over here on the left side. And these are all the steps you take to solve the puzzle. So again, I'll put it on the video, it'll be a PDF file. I've had a piece of white oak laying around for a few years, so I decided to make my sliding pieces out of that. I took on the table saw and cut it about two, about three inches, a little over two and three quarter inches wide because my square is gonna be about two and a half inches. Then I took it, I sliced it down the middle on a table saw. I do have a band saw, but my band saw is an old one. I can't do any slicing, so I kind of use a table saw for that. Then after I cut them in half, I took them through the planer and planed it so I had some good side, nice and smooth sides. I ended up with approximately just a hair over a quarter inch thick. The square and the puzzle is gonna be about two and a half by two and a half inches. So everything is based on that. So I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna say three inches. So I'm gonna cut three, six, nine. I'm gonna cut nine inches off and that'll give me one for the square and two for if I make any mistakes. So I'm gonna go. So take your excess, the piece you have left over after you cut the nine inches and slice two pieces I'm gonna make mine one and one quarter inches. So one and one quarter, one and one quarter is two and a half inches and that'll be my square. All right, so by now you should have your nine inch piece by three, whatever you made it cut. And you should have your two sticks. Mine are inch and a quarter by whatever length you want put together. It's gonna to end up being two and a half inches. That's how what I'm working off of my square is two and a half inches. This puzzle, we're gonna have one piece, two and a half by two and a half. We're gonna have six pieces, inch and a quarter by two and a half. And we're gonna have two pieces, inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter. These two pieces, we're gonna cut on the chop saw you call it miter saw, I call it a chop saw. This piece for me is too small to do on my chop saw, so I'm actually gonna cut this on the band saw. On my chop saw, miter saw, I have a stop, I set, I have a spacer I use up against the stock because I don't wanna get my fingers too close to the saw blade. Then I'll take my two sticks I'll set my two sticks up against my stop. I'll move where I get a perfect cut. What I do next is I'll take a piece of scrap wood, push up it up against there, make sure your fingers are away and cut it. After cutting it, take your two sticks over on your a flat surface, whatever you want. Put your two sticks together, take the piece you cut, 
lay up against the two sticks like that and verify the length is the same as the double widths here. It should be nice, straight, no, no space, no anything. Everything has to be perfect. At this point, take your two sticks, put them in, chop. We need six of these, six pieces. Remember, two and a half inches long. I always make extra because I have a tendency to make mistakes. After you get done cutting those, take your nine inch piece. Again, same setting, hold it there, chop it. After cutting it, take your piece, turn it 90 degrees and chop it again. That should give you a perfect square of two and a half inches. After cutting those six pieces in my square, I put them on a flat surface, got a straight edge. I got actually a square. I put my three inch, my two and a half inch piece I put two pieces going this way, two pieces going this way, two pieces going this way. I verify that I have a nice straight edge. Everything is cut perfect. To cut this piece, like I said, I'm going to do on a uh, bandsaw. I'll take my stick again. I'll take one of these pieces, lay up there, mark it, go to the bandsaw, cut it. need two of them. Again, when you cut them, when you get both pieces cut, add them to the puzzle. Put them some places, put one up, go, grain going that way, grain, grain going that way. And again, it should be a nice straight line. If you notice on the pieces where they're touching, it's really hard to tell them apart and you're gonna wanna start sliding them around and you won't really recognize the pieces. So I was thinking about taking a router, routing the corners, the edges, you know, what could I do? But a router would really be too dangerous. So what I came up with is I'm gonna take the pieces and put on my sander and take my, my table and turn it down so I get an angle on it. I don't know if you can see that. I've tested it already. So I'm gonna be taking on the sander, pushing. I'll sand it just up to the edge. On my sander, I attach a piece of wood, some clamps. So this is a 90 degree here. The table, I tilt it down. Uh, it's not a 45, it's probably more like a 30. I'm not sure. So what I do, I take my big, my three by three piece, lay it against the edge here, push up, go almost to the line, flip it, same thing. It's a big piece. Of Two and a half inch pieces, easy to do. The other piece, I have my a push stick, push piece. I set in there, do the same thing. So I use this to push them up, keep everything perpendicular. And a one and a quarter by one and a quarter. I can do the same thing or I can free freehand it. So here's the pieces all beveled on the edges. As you can tell, you're not gonna have any trouble telling the pieces apart, you know, touching, you'll know exactly what you're doing. The next thing we're gonna make is the base. I like using this 3 16 blackboard white marker. NDF I get from Home Depot, two by four foot sheet, about $10. It's 3 16 inch. My pieces are a little bit over a quarter inch, so they're gonna stick up a little bit higher, which I really don't think is gonna be a problem. In fact, it might even be nice. I put together a real fast frame to test for size. I made the frame one eighth of an inch larger than the combined pieces, just to make sure everything's gonna slide like it should, no problems, and it does. So I'm gonna go ahead and make my new frame, make it one eighth of an inch taller and one eighth of an inch wider than the pieces combined. I made a two piece frame. This piece I cut out on my bandsaw which will go on the bottom, and this piece 
will go on the end on the bottom. That'll give me my rectangle. The frame is glued onto the bottom now. The bottom's white, top is black. This is that uh, black chalk white marker NDF board I buy at Home Depot. I really like it for projects like this. <clears throat> the next step is to take it to the table saw. I'm gonna rip these three sides where I'm gonna leave about three quarters of an inch. This side, I'm gonna leave big, so if somebody wants to hold on to it, it's easier to hold on to. I can always go back later and cut it. After I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and round these corners, the four corners. And then after I have all that rounded, I'm gonna spray the whole top, not the bottom, but the whole top with uh, flat black. It blends in real nice, looks real good. After that dries, I'm gonna go ahead and put these felt little feet on the back. So the base is all done. As you can see, everything looks really nice. What I did was, I'm trying to show you, uh, hopefully you can see it. I don't know if you can see it or not. If I put, took a marker, I marked where the pieces go. Because if you don't remember where the pieces go, it's hard to put back in place. So hopefully you can see the marks I put in there. So here it is with the pieces in it. Looks really good. I'm gonna slide these down because when I tilt it, it'll slide. Turned out really nice. The back has the legs. Piece of slide, real easy. Very happy with it. I like this extended piece here. Makes it easy to hang on to. Hope you enjoyed it. Have fun making one.